Hello dear children, welcome back to my channel. Our today's topic of discussion is coordination the linking system. Yes, from today onwards I am going to start this lesson and this is part 1 where I am going to give a brief introduction to the lesson coordination. So without further delay let us start the session. Subscribe now and press the bell icon. Never miss an update. Children, in our day to day life starting from morning waking up till you go to bed you perform number of physical activities in your day to day life for example sharpening a pencil when you go to school you may sharpen a pencil and when you sharpen a pencil you have to put the pencil in the sharpener and you have to twist it that is one physical activity and grasping a doorknob whenever you want to open a door you have to hold the doorknob with your hand you have to twist or rotate that then you have to push the door to open the door right this is another physical action or physical activity walking is another physical activity where you walk from one place to other place and another activity is running when you play you run from place to place when you are playing football you run when you are playing cricket you run driving uh, or riding a bicycle that is a physical activity dancing dancing is another physical activity writing with a pen so this is one activity that you perform in your school daily basis in every period all these physical activities are some of the physical actions which involve well coordinated movements made with well balanced postures now what does it mean by well coordinated movement for example take the example of this sharpening a pencil when you sharpen a pencil you have to hold the sharpener with your left hand you have to hold the pencil with your right hand you have to insert the pencil within the sharpener then you have to twist it in order to sharpen it all these activities they have to be in a ordered fashion okay without putting the pencil in the sharpener if you start twisting it it doesn't complete the work that you are doing okay and do you think that this coordination is brought about by a single system or multiple systems present in our body let us find out that all our functions in our body they are actually carried out by an effort of several systems working together one example is given here you can look this man is doing the pull-ups for the sake of better understanding I have given the picture with bones and muscles so that we can discuss clearly right in this physical activity you can see the bones and also you can see the muscles both the bones and muscles that means the skeletal system that includes the bone and muscular system that includes the muscle both of them are working together to bring about this movement okay but do you think that only these two systems are responsible for this movement do you think that other systems they do not have any role to play in this movement no if you think like that that is wrong in addition to these two systems that you can directly see over here several other systems have their own role to play several other systems also help for this process directly or indirectly and even within the muscular system several muscles work in the sequential order you know uh, this movement is brought about by the contraction and relaxation of bicep muscles and tricep muscles and imagine if both bicep and tricep muscles if they contract at the same time then this movement is not possible if they relax at the same time then this movement is not possible so one type of muscles the bicep muscles have to contract and triceps have to relax again the tricep muscles have to contract and bicep muscles have to relax then only this type of movement is possible now I said just now that several other systems also responsible for this process to occur for this movement to occur how let us come from the beginning again I told you that skeletal system and muscular system both are directly involved in this process skeletal system is nothing but the system that is made up of bones which gives support to your body so that you can stand erect and muscular system is made up of muscles which are attached to the bones and the muscles are actually responsible for bringing about the movement of the skeleton because skeletal system alone cannot make movement it is with the help of the muscles that are attached to the bones the body can move 
and just now i told that in addition to these two systems some other systems are also responsible for this they are also helping for this process to occur for example you know that muscles have to contract and relax rapidly in order to bring about movement in your body but do you think that muscles they contract and relax without consumption of energy no they require energy for the movement they require energy in the form of atp so the atp that is present in the muscular cytoplasm or myoplasm that will be used up for the contraction process and relaxation so that movement is possible but from where this atp comes into the muscles the atp comes into the muscles by burning the glucose within the muscles and the glucose will be available in the muscles for burning for its oxidation now what is the gas that is required for oxidation it is oxygen gas which is required for oxidation process right so the glucose and also the oxygen have to be supplied to the muscle cells in order to release energy who is going to supply that we have a separate system meant for that circulatory system our circulatory system is made up of fluid connective tissue called blood the blood now is responsible for taking or supplying this glucose that is the food material for burning as well as the oxygen to the muscle cells now another question is from where the blood gets this glucose and oxygen the blood gets the glucose from the digestive system we have a digestive system that digests the food that you eat right when you eat the food the carbohydrates the complex carbohydrates you have studied in your first lesson itself nutrition the food that has the carbohydrates they will be broken down into simple compounds simple carbohydrates monosaccharides such as glucose right now the glucose will be absorbed into the blood and that will be supplied to the required points in our body and the blood itself again goes to lungs where it will collect the oxygen gas and supply that oxygen gas to the muscles right and now imagine without circulatory system is it possible for the muscles to get energy to burn the food and get energy no it is not possible that's why circulatory system is also helping for this process to occur skeletal system muscular system digestive system and circulatory system working in a coordinated manner and even the respiratory system only a few systems i'm explaining but there are multiple systems that helps in this process and for all these systems to work in a coordinated manner there is another system which is taking care of it what is that nervous system we have a nervous system made up of nerve cells which helps in bringing about the coordination in different systems of our body to bring about a particular response or a particular movement not only nervous system there is chemical coordination also taking place chemical coordination is brought about by the hormones which are secreted from the glands present in your body so that's about how different systems are helping us to bring about a particular movement now the question is what triggers the movement of the muscles in some of the previous examples i told you that muscles are responsible for the movement they bring about the movement but actually you know movement is a kind of pathway which involves cells tissues and organs when you talk about movement you cannot simply say that skeletal system or muscular system it happens starting from the cellular level muscle cells contract muscle tissue contract as a result of that organs move right so it starts from the cellular level and ends with organ level and organism level and this happens because all of them they pick up the signals of change from the surroundings and respond to them that means movement happens when you pick up the change from the surroundings okay when you pick up the signals of the change from the surroundings and then only you respond to them in the form of a movement right for example look at the example of this uh, mobile phone here when the mobile phone rings immediately you pick up the signal with the help of your ears your ears hear that noise and you start moving towards the mobile phone you pick up the mobile phone with your hand and you answer the call right how you are able to respond to such signal and another question is why does the living body respond why we have to respond to signals of change from the surroundings these two questions will be answered by yourself only at the end of this lesson 
okay move on to the next slide we can think of a response as an effect of change in the environment of the organism or signal of change or stimuli so let us now find out what does it mean by response we can simplify this definition the simple definition is in simple words stimulus is any change in an organism's environment that can cause the organism to react i hope that you know the meaning of environment environment to an organism is nothing but its surroundings right look at the first definition we can think of a response as an effect of change in the environment effect of change that means if any change occurs in the environment if any change occurs in the surroundings of an organism the response will be the effect of that change okay and this change that occurs in the environment this is called stimuli i hope that you got the meaning of stimuli the stimulus is nothing but any kind of change in the environment and that change may be a sound made by a mobile phone the change may be a huge noise that you that you hear a change may be somebody's voice you may hear right all these are the stimuli and you respond to that stimuli okay i hope that you got the meaning of stimuli and in response to the stimulus only we perform this physical actions the organisms make movement right so that's the example now all living organisms respond to stimuli this is one of the common attribution to all living organisms that they respond to the changes in the environment starting from the prokaryotic organisms even within the unicellular organisms the bacteria even amoeba which are unicellular they also respond to the stimuli because that is one of the fundamental attribute of the living organisms now let us see a few examples of this response to stimuli look at this pot here there are a few plants growing in that pot and they these plants in this pot they are growing in response to the stimuli what is the stimuli here in this case the stimulus is the sunlight okay and look at that picture very clearly look at this footage these plants they initially started growing towards the left side gradually after some time they started growing towards the right side what may be the reason when they start growing towards the left side it means that the direction of the light is from left side but when you change the direction of light from left side to right side now they start growing towards the right side so here the direction of the sunlight is the stimulus growth of these plants in the direction towards the direction of the sunlight is the response given by these plants but remember the plants here they are responding in the form of growth they are not turning towards the sunlight they are growing towards the sunlight so that also one of the example for stimulus and response a cat may be running because it saw a mouse the rat here it is running away from the cat because for this rat this cat is the stimulus okay and uh, one more example we start sweating when it is hot and humid you know children you are well aware that when it is very hot when it is humid then you can see small drops of sweat accumulating on your skin that is actually the sweat that is oozing out from the sweat glands and why that happens that happens because your body is responding to the stimulus which is the hot and humid climate here okay when the climate turns hot and humid your body has to cool down in order to cool down your body now start producing the sweat the sweat absorbs the heat from your body it gets evaporated so that your body will be cool right so these are a few examples of stimulus and response now what is the importance of this stimulus and response the ability to react to particular stimulus in a particular situation it is of very important in ensuring the survival of the organism it's very important because you know here in this example the cheetah is chasing the deer right and the deer is running away from the cheetah because it has to survive 
the deer has to survive because if it doesn't run the cheetah catches it and kills it right so in order to save its life in order to ensure its survival it is running away and running away from the cheetah is a response okay next one look at this man here he is playing with the snake but when the snake tries to bite him he immediately pulled his hand away from the snake that is the response given by this man because if he doesn't pull his hand the snake would have bitten him that is a threat to his life right so in order to survive he did that response look at this another footage here the crocodile when it tries to catch as the deer it immediately ran away from that because if it doesn't go away from there it will be caught by the crocodile and it will be killed so these three examples are going to tell you about the importance of reaction to a particular stimuli if they do not react their survival will be at stake right now one more example when somebody focuses a beam of light in your eyes immediately you close your eyes that is another response that your body shows because if you don't close your eyes your eyes may be damaged because of that intense light so by this i want to conclude that organisms they react to the stimulus the reaction of the organism to the stimulus is very important for its survival okay the quicker the response they give to watch a stimulus there are more possibilities that they may survive and don't forget that all these movements all these reactions all these responses they are possible because of the well coordinated movements of different body parts and they are coordinated by nervous system and endocrine system which we will be learning in the coming classes okay children that's all for today in my next session i will explain in detail about the lesson coordination and we will be learning about different components of nervous system thanks for watching